Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, if you heard a little bit of a pause there, it's because I was waiting for Twitch to tell me that I was live, because sometimes it doesn't do that. Okay, so today uh, we're going to be looking at this question. It has nothing to do with anything we've done before, so, you know, again, not anything useful for you if you have been watching the previous streams, and not anything useful for you if you watch the stream today. So the question here is, how do I find the, uh, the signs that the planets are in uh, during any given date? And there's a little bit of a, an example here. The, uh, the questioner is, uh, the person asking the question is Trip. He's a new contributor. We're supposed to be nice to him. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, now you'll notice here that the question already has an accepted answer. Um, so you might ask, well, why, why are we going to answer a question that already has an accepted answer? And uh, the, the reason we're doing that is uh, sort of uh, central to my whole philosophy of why we answer stack questions, and that is primarily to annoy people. Uh, I mean, you know, there might be some other benefits some people have gained from some of my answers. I don't know. Um, but no, the primary reason we do it is to annoy people, and we're going to be focusing on that quite a bit today. Uh, so I will go ahead and bring up a little bit of an Emacs file so we have something to deal with. Uh, by the way, I did get a lot of stuff uh, done in terms of getting stuff uh, fixed up. So, um, and one of the things I did is uh, because I mount SSHFS, you know, I don't even know why I keep saying that word. Uh, because I mount the, um, my remote machine, uh, I, I have a little thing called startup that every time I, re, um, I restart this machine or unfreeze this machine, because I actually use uh, virtual machines freeze and unfreeze feature, uh, it, does a, it does a few things for me here. And I mean, I have to type in passwords and stuff. But now we should have BC git shared nicely so we can actually uh, make some changes. So we're going to go to BC git astro and always we give, put my name in there. Uh, presumably, and the excuse I use is so I don't clutter up anybody else's namespace. The real reason is because I'm incredibly arrogant and want to put my initials in front of everything. Uh, and it is sort of that subtle arrogance where I don't put my whole name in front of it, just my initials, just so you know. Um, and let's see, uh, planetary astronomical signs. And this is actually going to be um, pretty much a pure text answer. I don't know if I'm going to be doing any math with it or anything, at least not directly. So, so we're going we're gonna, to uh, sort of write out an outline of what the answer is going to be, making it as annoying as possible. And then later we're going to come in and we're going to sort of clean it up a little bit and, um, and, and, and uh, then post it, except there's going to be a reason we can't post it while we're on stream, but we'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so the, uh, what's the first thing we can do that's pretty annoying? Well, usually when people ask about signs and planets, they're talking about astrology, not astronomy. Um, and in astrology, in modern astrology, and I really wish I had some sort of sound effect for that, uh, for modern astrology, uh, actually astrologers don't really use constellations anymore or signs. They use houses. Uh, there are 12 houses, and each represents a 30-degree move along the ecliptic, the path the sun follows over the year. Uh, but they still name these houses, uh, some, sometimes they call them the first house, second house, but they still name these houses Aries, Taurus, Gemini, even though the sun is no longer in these constellations uh, when, these, uh, when these houses occur. When the, uh, when the sun is said to be in Aries at the vernal equinox, it is actually, I think now, in Pisces, although uh, it is moving towards Aquarius. And uh, when it does move into Aquarius, we will have the age of Aquarius. But there's a problem with even that, and I'm going to make a little bit of a note to talk about that later. Uh, age of Aquarius is stupid. Um, uh, and, and, and the reason is going to be because we're going to we're going to talk about some constellation boundaries and stuff, but that's coming up later. But I do want to I do want to make sure we get to that. Um, okay, so uh, now of course, um, as stupid it is, as it is, we still refer to the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn because at one point the sun was in Cancer during the summer solstice, and that's where it's overhead at the summer solstice, the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, but it's actually now moved into Gemini, and I think someone said it's actually maybe has moved all the way into Taurus now. Uh, and the Tropic of Capricorn, which is where the uh, sun is uh, when at the winter solstice for us, which is the summer solstice for the uh, backwards uh, people living in southern hemisphere, like Australia and whatever else the hell is down there. Um, 
So, and we still call it the Tropic of Capricorn, but I believe the sun is now in Sagittarius uh, during the winter solstice. Um, but the problem here is, in the comments, people have actually sort of mentioned uh, that, uh, you know, talked about astrological signs, and he had, in the original poster, Trip, which, by the way, sounds like the kind of thing you would do if you fall over. Um, so I'm going to be insulting everybody here, uh, you know, pretty much. Uh, so that would pretty annoy Trip a little bit, making fun of his name. People have already actually talked about that, so uh, so we can't really pretend like it's a new thing we can talk about, but we can still annoy people by mentioning it. So we're going to say something like, as noted in comments, and I'm going to write this up later, but you know, as noted in comments, not astrological position. Now, one of the things I'd like to do here to annoy people is to make gratuitous mentions of myself. So. Has I, have I actually done anything that refers to astrological position? And the answer is yes. In fact, I wrote a post on astronomy that actually um, solves the problem of what astrological positions everything is in over a long period of time. Um, so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find that. Oh my god, I've got too, way too many answers. Um, and I actually might be able to find it easier some other way, but let's see. Um, uh, astrological and astro astrology is not really allowed on astronomy.sc, but it is if because if it's also astronomical in nature. Uh, and actually, you know, astrology is where astronomy began, so it is actually sort of uh, interesting uh, to to look at that. Um, and I think what I, I the files I have here are called like moving house, which is what I use to. Um, which is what I use to compute what house, and this actually contains, you know, if you're if you're interested in look, looking at this, um, whoa, and maybe I should have said BZ less, and it's it's here in my GitHub, so you can you can look at this. It basically tells you every time a planet or the moon, and I think I limited to Saturn, so I don't think Uranus is going to be in here, um, uh, changes from one house to the other, and then house states because that was what the question was really about, um, tells you. Um, these these th these funny looking numbers basically tell you what constellations uh, each or what houses actually what each of the planets are in, and every time there's a state change from one house to the other. Uh, so why did I do this? It's because I think someone asked if uh, houses can ever repeat, and I did answer that question. And we definitely want to uh, make a arrogant mention of that question in doing this. I'm going to see if I can find out where I actually wrote this up. BC zodiac. Yep, it looks like I have. Uh, I have a uh, text. Um, yep, here it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I need to figure out what I have actually... This might be kind of ugly because I might have forgotten what question I'm actually answering here. Um, oh, here we are. Hang on. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so there's another thing that I've mentioned. Um, unfortunately, this one is too far removed to arrogantly include it. That's about the equinoxes moving backwards in time because the length of our year is not even under the um, even under the Gregorian calendar is not quite good enough to keep track with the actual uh, length of the uh, the year. The actual time between successive spring equinoxes uh, or equini, which is incorrect but sounds much cooler. Okay, so now I need to probably figure out uh, now, if I can do this correctly, I might be able to get away with just searching for houses.txt. Um, BZ2, yes. Aren't I amazing? Okay. And just to be a little bit more arrogant, I could link directly to my answer, but I don't want to. I want to link to the question. So we're going to say my answer to, because it sounds more arrogant than just pointing directly to the question, th to my answer. So, okay, so as noted, if you, so this would be something like, you know, um, if it were the astrological position, blah, 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 this is where you'd go to find it. It's not. This information is totally useless to them, but it, it again, helps uh, not only pad out the answer, but it annoys people, which is our primary goal today, and, and every day, actually. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is we're going to, um, we're going to notice that someone has already used Stellarium to pr print a couple of pictures here, to, uh, to, you know, post a couple of pictures. Um, but if you look carefully, um, and I, I'm pretty sure I did look at carefully because when, I, when it comes to annoying people, I do try to take some extra effort. 
Uh, he doesn't mention that uh, Stellarium can show constellation boundaries, uh, which it can. He doesn't mention it. So we're going to pretend, uh, you know, we're going to make him feel bad about himself, user number. And it's very clever, by the way, his name, because usually it's user followed by an actual number instead of the string number. So pretty clever name there. So uh, I think this will make him feel pretty bad that even though he posted some Stellarium crap, he did not bother to post constellation lines. He also made a couple of other mistakes that we were going to very mildly uh, gloss on. Uh, one is he left the atmosphere turned on and the ground turned on. Uh, we're going to be using, uh, you know, if we're going to be doing this as sort of a scientific study, we're not, we don't really care where we are in the Earth, and we don't, um, we don't really, we don't really um, want to see it from a specific point of view. There's also some um, banding, apparently, some Moiré effect in his. Uh, in his captors, which maybe we'll have to, so I can't really say too much about that. Um, but we want to, we want to, um, we want to go ahead and add constellation lines, and we just want to sort of casually mention that we're using the more scientific and less stupid mode of Stellarium than he did. You know, by getting rid of the atmosphere, getting rid of the ground, and basically treating, uh, putting Stellarium into what's effectively a star chart mode. So let's go ahead and do that now because we are we are going to need Stellarium, and I and I like running Stellarium. It's a good program. I mean, that's you know, that's pretty well written, and it, it's really good, both as astronomically, and it looks good. It's a good-looking program. Um, I do need to um, shrink it, unfortunately, a little bit, because on this VM, my resolution isn't quite as high as I want it to be. Now, because we're going to be using a Stellarium in, um, in chart mode, effectively, it doesn't really matter where on Earth we are. We do need to be on Earth, because we, we do want to see the, the stars from there and the planets from there. But it doesn't matter where on Earth we are. We're pretty much... Excuse me. Um, we're pretty much going to be looking, um, you know, from a geocentric point of view. The moon does change position depending where you are on the Earth, but it's not a big deal, and it's not going to because usually when we say what constellation the moon's in, we're talking about a theoretical observer at the center of the Earth, a geocentric observer. So it's completely unnecessary to change our position. But this is sort of a running annoyance that I have. I try to remind people very casually, without pushing it, where I live, which happens to be Albuquerque, New Mexico, the greatest city, uh, not even really in the county. This is Bernalillo County. We have better cities. We have uh, open areas. We have dust that's better than our city. But you know what? That's where I want to be. Um, so again, totally unnecessary. So that's one thing we'll do. Uh, now we'll go ahead and actually uh, you know, fix the effects that... Uh, that we so several things we're going to do here. First of all, um, we are going to look at not con constellation arts, constellation labels, constellation lines. No, we're going to look at constellation boundaries. And I think to do that, you actually need to go to one of these special menus. You can't do it from one of the shortcuts. Uh, so no ground, uh, no atmosphere, just like Albuquerque. <laughs> no, um, deep sky objects. We really don't need for this. Planets. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do this. Now, here's the big thing we're going to do that totally, you know, totally destroys what we were doing in terms of a location. This actually shows you what the sky would look like if I were if I went outside. But we really want sort of a right ascension declination. We want sort of a very generic star chart like look. And wow, that didn't change anything, did it? Well, but anyway, that's what we're doing. Um, I'm actually sort of curious if that does do anything now. Okay, either we're very, very close to uh, zero hour or something. But anyway, you see the equatorial grid looks like this. And it's a little bit different if you... So I don't... Wow. Okay, so here's the issue. See, if you're doing this, you can make the right ascension and, and declination lines go crazy. But we actually want to be in the mode where they're straight. I mean, they're not really straight because the, the celestial sphere is a sphere, but we're pretty close to straight. I mean, we have um, we have sort of a rotation here that takes us between right ascension and declination. So that's pretty good. Now, so again, this is the fact that we're in Albuquerque now has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. We've gotten rid of everything that is Albuquerque specific. Uh, cardinal points, I think we will, and there's really no need to keep them since we're not being very specific. Um, center on selected object, night mode, a little bit too clever. If you're outside, uh, the red light's gonna not affect your eyes as much. I'm inside, I don't care. Full screen, unfortunately, we cannot do that here. Ocular view, I forgot what that is, but oh yeah, we're not going to do that either. Satellites, we don't need them. And the one thing we do want to do is sort of stop time because I that doesn't really matter now because we're in a sort of a star chart move, you know, star chart mode. Uh, and I'm wondering if we can get rid of the stupid message. 
Oh, 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 no. Be gone from this place. Okay, I've messed things up now. Um, unselect. God. Okay, now I need to get rid of the stupid Oculus thing. There we go. I think I'm now back into normal mode, for whatever that means. Okay, so we're going to make fun of this guy, so we have to um, show him that constellation lines uh, can be shown in Stellarium. And I don't mean the lines that connect the constellations to make them look like things. I mean the actual constellation boundaries as determined by the International Astronomical Union in a way that's so horrible that it's going to annoy people some more. So to do that, I think we have to actually go to one of the... Uh, one that we can't really do that from um, the simple options. We do have to go to the um, sky and viewing options, I believe. Uh, stars, twinkle. We don't need twinkle. We don't need dynamic eye adaptation because we're doing pretty much scientific here. No atmosphere. No shooting stars because we are... Um, and... Um, we're going to use the, uh, the limit of 5.50, and we'll see why later. We don't really want to be looking at stars fainter than 5.50. Uh, so show planets. Sure, we don't need really to see anything else about this stuff. We're not going to scale the moon. We may at some point decide not to show planets, but the question is about planets, so we, we kind of need to do that. Okay, so markings. Um, equatorial grid, which I can turn on and off from the uh, shortcuts. Ecliptic grid. Actually, this was actually a pretty nice thing to have because the ecliptic is where the uh, is ultimately where the uh, the the, the, con the zodiac lies. The constellations we're talking about lie. Uh, azimuthal grid doesn't make any sense because we're not in that mode. We're not in the uh, viewing mode. Um, and somewhere here we can say constellation boundaries. And so this is this is what we kind of wanted to do. So we're going to take a screenshot here as soon as I figure out where I want to take the screenshot from. So now, okay. So it's just okay. So we do have the nice ecliptic grid, as you'll notice. This is the, the problem here is. Okay, we're going to need constellation names as well, but this is th this is hard to show because the the um, the ecliptic goes all the way around, so it goes in a big circle, and you know the maximum field of view I can get here. Wow, that's bigger than I thought. Is 235 degrees, but even that's too big to really see anything comfortably. So we're going to have to choose a little piece of the ecliptic that we want to show, um, and I think we do want to have um, the names of the ecliptic showing because I think. We actually do need that. We need to s show constellation names, um, show labels, because those are important. Those are the ones we, we talk about. So let's see if we can zoom out a little bit. Um, this this is getting a little bit busy, I think, but uh, we can get rid of this information. I'm pretty sure we don't have to select anything. Why am I why am I selected on Deneb? There we go. I don't know if we can get rid of this. I mean, just the the pop up. Um, I do want to keep Albuquerque in here because it is totally useless. Field of view 90 degrees is actually pretty good. That's going to give us sort of a balance between being too tight and uh, too loose, uh, which sounds dirty, but it it's not, unfortunately. Now, let's see, we've got Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. We could move here and get Leo. Now, the constellations are not the same size, which is going to be an issue for us in just a minute. Um, so we could get maybe more of the smaller ones in here. We I don't think I think we're gonna have to settle for Aries, um, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and there are some other constellations mentioned here. Because uh, if I zoom in anymore, well, let's see. I, I, I'm almost sure that I can't zoom in anymore. Well, you know what? That's not too bad actually. Um, give me a slightly better view of Cancer, Gemini, Taurus, and Aries. Except Aries is now covered by a freaking star. Oh yeah. Ah. Unnecessary zoom. Broke that. All right, let's see if we can get back to where we were, roughly. And I'm going to make the zero. This is a force the ecliptic grid, so maybe you know what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to make it so the zero is is flat, uh, but I'm not going to show it. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh -huh. Be careful here. Um. So do I want to go? No. What did I do that for? Undo. That's one thing this thing needs is an undo. Um, okay, that's it's going way too deep. Oh, I know why, because I can't really hold shift down at the same time. I think it's control that does. Nope. My version of Stellarium, I'm going to just say, is a little bit different, uh, which is why this isn't working. But actually, that's not true. Um, that is true, but 
I shouldn't have be having this much trouble with this. <sighs> I think these little arrows mean I can... No, it's not what I meant to do. I meant to... Freaking... Wow. This is so fancy, I no longer know how to use it. Alright, um... I think I might have to just reset the whole thing. Uh, or I think, no, oh, that's not what I want at all. This... This... Okay, this might just be this, so this might be the normal mode. Let's pretend that's what, what's going on here. Okay? All right, so we're going to um, make the zero line pretty flat, which I think we can only do, huh. Um, and we want to make it the center, too, because, of course, that's where we want the, uh, and we're going to zoom out a little bit to get, okay, and the ecliptic, okay, do I want to go, I should probably at some point wonder exactly what, making this flat, I think that means that we have to center ourselves on uh, on the summer solstice, which by the way you'll notice is right on the border of Taurus and Gemini. And I think it slipped into Taurus, someone said, in 1990. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Um, so let's do a little, I'm going to get one more uh, constellation in here. Um, how the hell are satellites showing up? Satellites be gone. Um, satellites have uh, eccentric enough orbits that uh, they don't really um, they don't really stay on near the ecliptic, so it's not that interesting. Okay, so Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. I think that's going to work. I'm going to get rid of the ecliptic grid. We do want to keep the boundaries. Uh, we don't want to keep the labels. And I guess I can't get rid of the ecliptic grid from here. I got to go back over here. Um, okay, and then we hit, I'm pretty sure it's shift S to create a, a snapshot, um, unless that's just on my other machine. Um, and let's see if we got, we got this, uh, we got this image nailed down. And so this will be a constellation with boundaries for Aries Taurus, Gemini Cancer, and a handful of other constellations that we're not actually interested in, but uh, come with the territory, literally. Okay, so let's see if I can, uh, I think by default Stellarium will um, not store its files in the um, home directory. And let's see what this is, Stellarium Troll Tech. That's a special program I used to troll people. I actually have no idea what that is. Is it in Stellarium? Oh, here we are. That's very nice, actually. So this version of Stellarium puts it um, nowhere. All right. Um, all right, it'll sh in config and now it'll tell me where it's putting its um, its images, screenshots, or whatever. Invert, full screen, false. Uh, screen, blah 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 blah. No one cares. Hey, and you could also find this from. Uh, okay, so it's not going to be in home anything. Uh, and I guess the keys aren't going to be here either, it's, it's kind of annoying. Um, so I was actually going to uh, do a little bit of uh, advance work so you guys, I wouldn't be wasting your time. And then I realized, of course, it's my goal to waste your time. So we are going to go ahead and fix some of this stuff. All right, so let's make sure we, uh, we have the correct key to get the screen capture. Although I think we can just do it like, uh, maybe not. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix our configuration a little bit. Uh, location, date, time. Sky and viewing options, search window, configuration window. Uh, main, information, don't care. And this is what comes up when we, we and this is good because it's actually really useful. Uh, navigation, edit keyboard shortcuts. Uh, we don't want date and time. I don't know if display options would actually, oh, I guess there are shortcut keys for, for everything, including what I was trying to do, but they're not like directly shown on the, on the screen. They're not shortcut buttons, they're shortcut keys. I don't know if that is a screenshot is going to be part of the display option. It's not really a display option, um, but but we're good. I guess not. Okay, uh, auto hide, save screenshot, control S, and I probably said something that wasn't control S. So I'm going to try control S, see if it shows up in my home directory. If it doesn't, 
uh, then we'll have to figure out where it's putting the stuff. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be in my home directory unless I say otherwise, or it's going to be in this directory. Um, uh, or neither. Th that's another possibility here. Um, okay, and it's possible, of course, that I didn't even make a screenshot because for whatever reason, it doesn't like Control S. If I use the right Control key, which I didn't, it would actually break me out of the virtual machine because that is my virtual machine escape key. But left control certainly is not. Okay. So back to the configuration window here. We're going to see um, tools, scripts, plugins, information, main. <sighs> We're not going to save these. Well, actually, we will save these settings. Navigation. The <laughs> Delta T algorithm, which the Delta T is actually computed, but only for actual times, not into the future. Um, I could get more stars, and there is home user pictures, which I didn't even know I had one of, but maybe I didn't until just now. Requested screenshot directory is not a directory. Well, Mr. Smarty Pants, uh, we're going to make it a directory. And by the way, when I do this, I'm going to make one quick, um, one quick, um, here I R sync. oh actually it's file star sync. Every so often I uh, rsync the stuff I'm doing here back to my main machine because I don't have, uh, I do, some of the stuff is actually pretty important. Most of it is not, um, but some of it is. So we're going to say home user pictures. Now, finally, and I thought it did a little pop-up telling you that you've done a screenshot, but either it doesn't or, nope, there we are. Here we go. And what's interesting, of course, is this is not a picture, it's an image. A picture would be of someone live. This is a simulation. And I'm going to use XV to, to look at it just real quick, but, uh, but okay. Um, and this, not crazy about it, but it's enough to get through the point that I'm smarter than the guy who posted the Slurian pictures without the constellation boundaries. Okay, so let's go back to our, um, if we can find it, we can go back to our, uh, there we are, okay. So we're going to post the picture with constellation boundaries. Okay, now we're going to, we're going to, um, we're going to, uh, okay, do a few other bad things. So we're going to annoy people some more. Now, um, one of the problems with constellations is they don't really look like what they're supposed to look like. Um, they and you can't really see it from here because we're not we're not we don't have the constellation lines turned on. But I will go ahead and turn them on, um, and you'll see they look exactly like the way they're supposed to because I'm using H. Uh, a. Ray's. I believe I'm using his um, his drawings which actually do make the constellations look more like they're supposed to look, more like the, um, more like what they're, what they're called. Um, so there's, there's two things we're going to do here, or there's actually more than two things we're going to do here. I think I'm using H. Ray's Star Culture. I might not be actually. Um, let me check real quick. Star Culture is how they draw the astronomical lines. And for this, I think we can get rid of the constellation names. Um, yeah, I th in fact, I think now that I think about it, I'm probably not using those. Let's look at the configuration window, information, tools, plugins. Um, I'm going to leave my time zone. I think it actually changed my time zone when I changed my city. Uh, location window, date, time, sky and viewing options. This might be here. Um, Star Lore. So right now we're using Western Star Lore, which is the basic default Star Lore. Um, and it's ugly because I'm going to try to find a really example where it's really bad. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, the stars... Oh, come on. This is... I might be able to... Oh, let's have to turn off the sun there. Okay. So for this I'm going to use Pisces which kind of does look like fishes. Aries, which looks nothing like a ram in the way it's drawn here. Uh, Taurus, which looks... I'm going to probably build it up a little bit. And Gemini, which looks way too much like what I want, so we're going to probably try to go a little bit further over here to Aquarius, which does not. So, uh... I don't think there's a method to, um... 
to make it so that the ecliptic is straight. Um, let me see what, what I can do. It's not going to work, but oh, and I can't even turn on the e ecliptic grid from this shortcut, so I'm not going to bother. Um, Pisces, Aries, so let's see if we can get Aries, Aldebaran, Pollux, Cancer. All right, now we can actually use this as an example because we can say something like, except for Gemini, blah, blah, blah. I uh, don't look much like them. Okay, so we'll, we'll do a little complaint there. Um, look like signs. Um, now, of course, the uh, the astronomical constellations have 13 constellations in the zodiac and st standard 12 that are used by astrologers. We're going to mention that, and we're going to annoy people with that in a slightly different way shortly. So let me go ahead and make a... Oh, I already did. Okay. Screenshot of that. Okay, now we're going to whine about something else. I think we can whine about this with the uh, with just the constellation boundary pictures. You, if I can bring this back up. You'll notice that uh, the... Con uh, if I, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the ecliptic again because this is actually sort of important. Um, Okay. You know, I wonder if I can bring up the ecliptic line without having to bring up the whole grid. Because that's what I really want, is just the ecliptic line. And I think there is a way to do that. Yeah, there we go, and that's what I want. So the ecliptic, and this time we can actually sort of mess with it a little bit and have it go sort of sideways. Um, I'm trying to find sort of an example here that's, you know, fairly useful. This is actually pretty good. Um, I think we're going to zoom out one level and then take a picture. We can take as many pictures as we want. We don't have to use them all. You'll notice that the sun doesn't, the, the ecliptic doesn't have equal length among the constellations. So it's not that easy to figure out, you know, how long, uh, you know, it's, the, the sun does not spend anywhere near an equal amount of time in each constellation. Uh, and I don't know if this actually shows it that well. Cancer are pretty short, Leo pretty, Virgo is huge in terms of how much of the ecliptic is part of the the constellation, and I might have to turn off the sun because it's getting annoying. Um, Scorpius, very, very little time spent in the ecliptic. I'm going to have to probably turn off the sun. Uh, not not the actual sun. Um, I could scale the sun, I guess. Uh, okay, and I, and I can actually do this too. We can go ahead and move to a uh, time when the sun is not over here. Or the moon's not over here either, because those things both move pretty fast. I don't know why we have this thing here. This might be where the ground would be if I were to uh, put it back in. It is. And I don't know why I have atmospheric haze because I turned it off, but you know, let's face it. There's always so much you can do. Um, so I think this is actually a pretty good example showing that here in Virgo, the ecliptic has a pretty long clip. Here in Libra, a shorter clip. But here in Scorpius, like virtually nothing. And then it's in the 13th constellation, so this is actually a good picture because it shows you a lot of of why um, it's difficult to compute what const what physical, what you know astronomical union constellation uh, a given planet is in because it's it's not a very simple process. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll go ahead and somewhere put in something like a constellation uh, constellation ecliptic length in constellation very non constant. Uh, and we'll find a way to meld this all together uh, to include as much irrelevant information as possible while still making it sound like we're trying to answer the question uh, is not uniform. So it's not even like we could say, you know, well, if we know the ecliptic longitude is between this and this, blah, 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 because it's not. It's not going to work that way. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty convoluted. Now, I know some of you are thinking out there, hey, didn't Curious Word, I messed up that joke. Didn't Curious George once write a book that made the star signs look even better? It made, made them look better instead of like this total crap? And the answer is, of course, no. Curious George is a fictional character. Uh, he looks, by the way, even though he's called a monkey, you'll notice he has no tail. He looks more like a chimpanzee. Chimpanzees are apes, like orangutans. They are not. They are not monkeys. So that's always kind of bothered me there. Uh, but no, it is not Curious George who wrote it, but rather H.A. Ray, I don't know what the H and A stand for, probably something German or Dutch. H.A. Um, Ray wrote a book 
that actually showed the constellations uh, sort of resembling uh, what they're supposed to resemble instead of the sort of weird wacky shapes that they we see like the teapot over here uh, the scorpion actually looks okay uh, this which looks like a diamond with two things sticking out of it um, so we need to and, and a lot of astronomers like H.A. Uh, Ray because uh, he has you know he sort of made up cleaned up the constellations a little bit so we're going to take a couple of digs at H.A. Ray uh, one is actually he knew about it himself uh, but we're going to do it anyway and the other is just pretty nasty we're going to point out something and we're going to point it out uh, in just a second here we're going to go ahead and go to sky and viewing options star lore and I think Oh, I'm annoyed. They don't have H.A. Ray by default. So this is bad, but that's okay. I can actually sync it over from my, um, from my other machine. Um, uh, alternative... Oh, here we are. Astrums. Here it is. And by the way, um, when they say the star is a new way to see them, they, you know, everyone thinks, oh, this is the big book that did all this stuff. Actually, it's not. Um, there was a curious George book. Uh, something like Curious George Explores the Stars or whatever, uh, where H.A. Ray first did this and he rewrote that as a separate book about astronomy. So really Curious George is, is the person who should get the credit for this, not as a, not, not as a person, but, uh, rather, um, but rather as sort of the, the, he didn't actually, I don't think H.A. Ray actually thought about writing an astronomy book until after he wrote that. Uh, um... Well, that's that's interesting. I do have a search for account, of course, uh, but hang on while I check to see what the uh, what the heck it actually is, because I don't know. Um, and by the way, there is no one in chat, so uh, so there's that. Um, okay, let me go ahead and check my source forge account. I do have one. Um, if I can find it or not, I don't know. I didn't know you needed one just to download stuff. <sighs> but let's take a look here. Okay. And again, I'm probably not going to be able to cut and paste. I will not be able to cut and paste. But okay. Remember me. Remember me. Okay, so the permissions for this page do not allow me to access it, which is stupid. So we're going to try this again. Okay, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't think they blocked me from Stellarium. Um. Let's see. As of last year, the project... So good, I went through the process of logging in to SourceForge, which I, now that I think about it, was a pretty bad idea, um, for no reason. Um, so I don't know how old this version of Stellarium is, or if it's a bug or something, uh, but apparently... Um, ooh, actually, it'll tell me what the URL is here, but apparently someone needs to update this URL badly. Um, meaning, desperately, not in a faulty manner. Okay, so let's see here. I could probably just pull this whole thing, but let's see. Um, somewhere here it's going to say st lore or cultures, I think is what they call it. Uh, I think they actually call it cultures. Because I've, I've sort of worked with this before. Sky cultures! Added pinion translation. Yeah, good for you. No one even cares. Okay, and of course I could just download that one file, but you know, when in doubt, download everything. So we're going to do a git clone. We're probably not even going to push back to this repo because we don't need to. Um, let's go ahead and, and this will work because it's on the same machine. So let's go ahead and unnecessarily do this. Um, should not take too long, but maybe it will. Don't know how big this, didn't realize how big this repo was. But so let's talk about some other stuff we're going to do um, after we make fun of... So the thing we're going to make fun of H.A. Ray for, we're going to put that on hold for right now, um, is basically that even though... Well, we're going to talk about it later. So I'm going to defer that. Okay. Okay, so how else can we annoy people here? Now, by the way, notice it's got two closed votes. I, I will vote to reopen it. It's a, actually a really good question. Um, okay. Um, another thing we're going to point out, again, not actually useful to the, to the question at all. Um, 
because the sun actually stays pretty close to the ecliptic, but the other planets and the moon do not. In fact, they can vary quite a bit from the ecliptic. And I've actually written an answer about that. So once again, gratuitous mention of one of my answers is going to be doable here. So, uh, you know, we can start with a very calm note like uh, um, planets and moon do not always remain in 13 parentheses, not 12 constellations, to show that we're really smart and we know that Ophiophagus, which I cannot pronounce, um, that it, it is part of the, uh, you know, we, we're smart enough to realize that that is right on the ecliptic, so the sun does enter that. But, but, we, but even beyond that, it doesn't remain in those 13 constellations. And why doesn't it do that? Well, if I can find it, um, I have an answer for that. And that, that's literally the only reason is uh, yes. And in fact, this is a particularly annoying question because I abuse the answer your own question. Hey, abuse the answer your own question feature of the site um, and ask myself what other, in addition to the 12 constellations of the zodiac, uh, the way they, they refer to Ophiophagus is a different constellation, but that, that's fine. Um, and I answer the question myself. So this is a, a beautifully annoying question and answer, and I accepted my own question answer. So this is really sort of a doubly good thing to annoy people with. Not only uh, not only is it um, gratuitously mentioning my own question, it's also gratuitously mentioning my own answer. And the only question and answer on that are me. So again, really, really good. And I know what you're thinking. Um, what if by accident, and you know, an astronomy.stackexchange moderator finds this video. Aren't they going to get annoyed? Now, now, and you know, when they get annoyed, it, it is pretty bad. Um, th you know, they, they will crawl out of their holes. They will stop sucking on the uh, still living warm, um, you know, the warm blood of still living babies. That's what they do. Um, and they might actually take some sort of action against it, even though technically this is not on the Astronomy Stack Exchange site, so it is technically immune. But now we're going to do something really bad. We're going to mention this video um, in the answer. So why are we doing that? Now, how, how does this serve our purpose of annoying people? Because no one's going to watch this video. Because I've put up video links before saying I live streamed my answer, and I'm going to do it again, and no one's going to watch it. I could be linking to porn or to something really dull, like bad porn, and no one would actually ever look at it. But, this is the annoying part, one day someone might actually look at it. One of the mods, one of the, the original poster maybe, one of the people who's given a dumb answer, well, ad actually there's just the one guy who doesn't know how to use Stellarium, and actually probably does, I'm just being mean to him, because that's what I'm going to be doing here. We'll watch it, and they're going to feel really bad for not having watched it before. So there, you know, you're annoying them because they could have known all of this before, but they're not going to watch it until much later, and when they do, they're going to feel bad retroactively. And when you're dealing with people who are relatively intelligent, and the people on Astronomy Stack Exchange are relatively intelligent, um, you really want to give them the knife, but let them twist it themselves. So this will, this will be like giving them the knife. I'm giving it to them right here in this answer. They're going to find it when it's rusty and, and, and you know, dull. And that's when they're going to sort of twist it into themselves and feel really bad. So this is a, this is a very good reason to mention this video in this answer. Okay. So now we've done quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of um, of bad stuff here. Um, let's talk about the why the age of Aquarius is stupid. Now, the constellation boundaries were drawn by the International Astronomical Union. Um, I think they were drawn sometime in the 1900s, but and this is just like a, one of those beautiful things. Oh, by the way, I you know, uh, I'm going to have to do something else, but I, I want to save it for later. Um, the um, You'll notice also the other problem is the constellation lines are not straight. I mean, even if we went to an equi um, equatorial grid, you'll notice that the constellation lines are not as straight as you would want them to be. In fact, they're not straight at all. They're tilted. Uh, and even if you can't... Actually, they look pretty straight, don't they? Hmm. Hmm. Well, now I feel bad, because they're, they're not. They're not straight. Um, and they're not straight because of precession. Um, so you might say, well, you know, when the International Astronomical Union uh, came up with these constellation names, what did they decide, what, 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 uh, what uh, frame of reference did they use? 
Uh, and they did this in the, I think, the early to mid 1900s. So you really couldn't expect them to use J2000 like we do today. Um, let's see. Right. Uh, we couldn't ask them to use, you know, J2000, but you would think maybe they used like B1950, the sort of the way the Earth stood it as it was known in 1950. Not exactly because we didn't have satellites up and we didn't know the Earth orientation parameters that well, but but close enough. Uh, but they didn't. I think the the thing they used. I'm going to double check this. Is B1875. That's right. Um, I'm going to double check this, but I'm pretty sure this is correct. Uh, constellation definition. They use something so obscure that um, here we go. Unfortunately, this is not going to be um, 1930s when they did it. Um, because they used a book that was written back in the 19th century, and we are, by the way, now in the 21st century, for those of you who are keeping track. Um, and so, why is this interesting? And I, and I have these files, so, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and confirm the B1875. Well, that means the constellation lines were actually straight. Um, you know, they, they went along lines of uh, right ascension and declination, when you're looking at the... what the hell is this doing? It's unhappy. Um, B1875, which is just probably the worst possible kind of procession you could choose. Uh, because it's not one of the common ones, it's not even a 50-year multiple one, it's 1875. Just a ridiculous, ridiculous year. Especially to, you know, to decide that's where you're going to set your constellation lines for. But this also, and this also is, let's go back to why this is, uh, this is stupid. Um, now, the fact that the vernal, actually this probably belongs up here. Um, you've probably heard of the age of Aquarius, or maybe not, which occurs when the vernal equinox slips from Pisces into Aquarius. And uh, a lot of, and according to the ancient Incans, who apparently used uh, the same constellation system we did, so a lot of people have sort of looked at this and said, let me get rid of some of these lines. That's not what they said. Um, equatorial grid, zero degrees. Um, and if you look here, where the uh, ecliptic crosses the, where the ecliptic crosses the, uh, the equator, this is in Pisces. Uh, and it is moving. We could actually look at this if we wanted to. Let's actually do this. It, because, uh, because, um, uh, story of actually will do procession. So now, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see this line here is sort of moving this way. And we're going to have to probably go a little, I wonder if we can go faster than this. Um, Uh, so you'll now you'll notice it's uh, still in Pisces. Someone said 2600. I actually worked it out once. It's like 20, 2300. You'll notice getting closer. 2400. The crossing point is almost out of Pisces. 2500. Um, very close to the border of Pisces. 2600. It's crossed over, I believe. Well, actually, wow. 2600. Um, yeah, it actually has crossed over into Aquarius. Uh, actually, that's twenty. Well, I don't know why he did that. Twenty six hundred. I'm gonna have to go over here, and it's actually a crapshoot, isn't it? All right, but by twenty eight hundred, it's moved over. And and the whole point of this is that it has no point. And let me go ahead and reset the clock real quick. Okay. Um, and the whole point of this is there's no point to it. Because the International Astronomical Union made these constellation boundaries in the 20th century, they used a percent, you know, a, a, a reference frame that was from the 19th century, but they actually made these uh, boundaries official in the 20th century. And unless you think the Incans somehow controlled the Astronomical Union, which means it would be much more powerful than we thought, although it could be possible, there's no way they could have known that IAU was going to make these boundaries. These boundaries are arbitrary, and not only are they arbitrary. If you're right here in this region here between Pisces, you know, this is pretty clearly uh, the fish here. This here, nice fish, not a problem. Uh, but over here, it really becomes sort of a question, depending on how you draw the water carrier, 
it sort of becomes a question of where exactly does Aquarius start if you don't accept, you know, if you don't know that the IAU has put up these artificial boundaries. And we really don't know. So we don't know where the Incans uh, believe that, uh, you know, we don't know where they were thinking, assuming it even exists, the age of Aquarius would begin. And I don't know if it's the Incans, it might be the Mayans, one of those people that you, you hear about who are supposed to have really wise ancient culture, but are no longer alive, so maybe they weren't that wise after all. So, so that was the point I wanted to make here, is even though people say that, you know, we can measure the precise time that the uh, spring equinox, uh, you know, slips into Aquarius, that's only a definition of the IAU, which has nothing to do uh, with what whichever ancient civilization decided uh, to put this in. Okay, so that is another thing I'm going to be whining about. Um, so now, and then we are going to get back to the HA race stuff here in a minute. Uh, so now we have the uh, the other sort of um, the other sort of nastiness, which is uh, can we make fun of what's wrong with B eighteen seventy five? Well, this is actually now we're going to give an answer. So here we basically, we're going to show to annoy people, uh, you know, um, we're going to be redundant with this lovely sort of astrological thing. We're going to make some fun of the Incans, or the Mayans, not the, well, the International Astronomical Union actually we're going to make fun of. We're going to post some pointless pictures, all this. So at the end of this sort of, uh, we've basically now shown that the answer to this would be so incredibly useless, you wouldn't even want to use it. So of course, we're now going to answer the question. Now that we've shown that there's no use to it, we're going to do it. And the way you can do it is you can process the positions, you know, find a planetary position, um, and that you can do with C-SPICE or with, uh, you know, uh, I'll say C-SPICE. There is actually a, a Skyfield project by Brandon Rhodes, which I'm actually a contributor to, so you would think I like it, but I don't like Python, so I don't like the project. So we'll say C-SPICE. Um, you could even mention Horizons, and I will just because I like to, it, even though if you're going to do this programmatically, Horizons is probably not your best choice. Sea Spice is your best choice there. Precess the positions, so you find the positions of the planets, precess them to be 1875, and then, you know, because those are now straight lines, and then look up the position that way. Um, as far as I know, no one's actually taken the B1875 positions and and put them into a format where you can determine which constellation you're in based on your right ascension and declination. So I'm going to give him the third gratuitous self-mention, maybe. I might get in trouble for this one. Um, it turns out this is actually one of the things I've wanted to do. Um, Given, determine which constellation in uh, given Ari deck is in. Um, see, and it says right here, precess to 1875, uh, and precessing the constellation lines is like really difficult because they're continuous lines and it's just a pain in the ass. Um, and oh good, I have an actual reference to Skyfield here that may actually... Um, that may actually just, it's going to be useless, but it's going to be, again, one of those things where I get to mention how clever I am, well, in the in the middle of mentioning how clever I am. Um, this is gorgeous. This is truly, truly gorgeous. Why, why is this here, though? Uh-oh. Did he actually do it? Crap. Um, maybe I'd better look at this. Um, uh-oh. Oh, dear. Um, so here's, of course, my comment, which is, which is why I need to mention this. Um, hyper, hyper gratuitous here, by the way. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like masturbation, but it just doesn't really stop. I mean, that's, that's the great thing. You can keep going. Um... Oh my god, I did this? I mean, yeah, I did this. So this is actually an important one. I, apparently I took the, uh, the text files and I glued them together. Wow, I am smart. Okay, so now I've gotten to the point where I'm so freaking smart that I actually forgot what I did. But let's take a look at it real quick. Um, and I don't think this is really deep. I think this is just basically... Um, um, this isn't cool. That's not what I wanted. Um, wow. 
I wrote a C program for this? I don't think I ever finished it, but you know, who knows. Oh my god. So apparently I got as far as doing it for Aries, and uh, I'm pretty sure I used Mathematica because, uh, and the constellation boundaries are uh, straight lines, but they are, the, r the, uh, the resolution is 1 240th of a degree. Um, what bugs me though is I'm pretty sure that this line, this is a precessed, uh, this is a precessed uh, file. This is not the original. So I'm, I don't know why the hell, let me see what the hell my comment says here. Could be wrong, might have to fix it. Um, oh no, this is the easiest way to use this, is the, okay. So now, so I'm lying here by the way, this is not the easiest. The easiest way is to process and use the original uh, boundaries. And then I see in Fortran, it, they do? Um, okay. Damn. Well, Piers Brandon screwed me over by actually implementing this. Um, so this is bad because... Um, this means that to the original poster, Skyfield might be more useful than C Spice. So, which I don't like Skyfield. No, no offense, Brandon. Um, okay, but I'm gonna have to mention this though. Skyfield more useful has const lookup function, and unfortunately, that's important enough that might actually need to be jacked up a little bit. Um, and let's see. And somewhere I need to point out that the boundaries, um, the other problem, of course, is um, the example given by, I guess we're going to call him Loser Boy now, even though he's probably not that bad. Um, nope, wrong one. Still wrong one. Wow, where, where have we gone? Here we are. Um, it's not Loser Boy. What's it, what is his name? Let's find out. A user number, yeah. Pretty clever name. And, you know, he might actually have some intelligence. And by the way, I, I do know that women can be, uh, can be astronomers, uh, mathematicians, and anything they want to be, and that, I'm fine with that. Uh, but I do, I'm going to annoy them by using the male pronoun uh, the way we were taught when we were in school, because the male pr pronoun presumably covers both genders. Uh, so if you are a feminist and you're offended by that, uh, please be assured that is intentional. Uh, if you are not a feminist, if you're one of those people who thinks that uh, gender is binary and uh, and you know are not feminist or whatever? I don't like you either. So just just so you know, I mean, I'm not going to annoy you because I don't have a way of doing it that's really easy for me right now. Um, but I actually prefer that. I actually like the feminist. I'm just going to annoy them slightly by using the male pronoun. But if you're one of those anti-feminists or you know binary gender people, I I just don't like you. In fact, I don't like you so much. I'm not even going to bother to annoy you. Okay. So the bottom here is. Um, Usually, when you show a planet that's inside of a constellation, it's right in the middle of it. It's right sort of where the action is the constellation. However, as we sort of pointed out for uh, Aries and Pisces, and it's certainly more true for others, um, sorry, for Pisces and Aquarius, um, it's not really always clear. You know, if there's a star over here, I guess you could argue that it's in Cancer because this is a Cancer star, and because this is where, the, you know, IAU draws the boundary. But honestly, from a point of view of ancient peoples or whoever's looking at the sky, they're not going to say this constellation is in Cancer or Gemini. They're going to say it's between Gemini and Cancer. Um, so, you know, this is, and this is again because, you know, there's some fairly dark area, especially in what, what's known as the wet region of the sky. I think I just made that up, though. Um, well, there are not a lot of bright stars here in, you know, Capricornus, got a few. Uh, this is actually the H.A. Ray one, I think. Um, by the way, when you're looking at Fomal Hot, we're looking pretty much up from the uh, from our galaxy, which is why it's the thinnest possible view you can get, because we're closer to the top of our galaxy in terms of uh, galactic north. Um, so this region, when you're looking at this region of space, it's pretty dark because we're looking straight up through the galaxy, and and this is again why you know you if you have a if you have a star over here, um, you know you, you if, sorry if you have a planet over here, not a star here obviously. Um, you're just not gonna. You're just not gonna get the. Um, you know, y it's gonna be sort of ambiguous to an observer back in the past who didn't know what the IAU was gonna do, what constellation this would be in. So again, we're showing a sort of the, uh, you know, beating the dead horse of your question is totally useless. You are totally useless. 
but I'm going to answer your question anyway to show you how incredibly smart I am that I can even answer stupid questions. That's how brilliant I am. Um, so that's another thing we're going to mention, and we're going to have to sort of glue this all together, uh, and it's going to get a little bit... Uh, I th it's going to want us to maybe word it a couple of times before we get it right. Okay, so now I think we've got the... Um, we should have, because I'm not using screen, we should actually now have the uh, Stellarium, uh, the Stellarium GitHub, and that should include the HA Ray Western Ray. And by the way, there's two two versions here. One is in Latin, and the other is in English. We will use the English version because that is the actually the correct uh, version for um, uh, correct version for HA Ray. He did do these in English. I don't know if he ever converted his to, to Latin. Uh, other people have done so. So now I need to figure out where the hell we keep um, where the hell we keep our sky cultures. Now I do have a um, I do have a um, subdirectory called this, but I don't know if that's where I'm keeping them. I don't I don't think I think this is actually just going to mean like user local Stellarium sky cultures or something. Uh, hmm, user local share, user share, something stupid like this. User share Stellarium. This is always kind of a fun thing to do to figure out where these they're keeping the stuff. Sky cultures. All right. So what we're going to do here is I want to be careful here. I don't necessarily, I'm not going to copy them all over. I don't really want to do that. I may want to copy the Latin one over even though we're not going to use it right now. Um, definitely need to copy the English one over, of course. And I'm going to try to bring it up without stopping Stellarium. It's not going to work, but, you know, I'm crazy, man. And why don't we, so then we have one Western one. So why don't we do all three of these Western ones? And we're going to obviously need to do it recursively, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to have to put a pseudo in front of it because I don't have permission to write in user share Stellarium. Stop guy cultures. Okay, and I hopefully this won't go one level too deep like it sometimes does. And hopefully I can put a space here so I know what I'm doing. And of course I will need my password, which is ABC123, if you ever break into my virtual machine. Um, so let's make sure we actually did this correctly. User st share Stellarium. By the way, there is a convention on how these things are named, and basically the uh, the people who release these programs uh, try to figure out some location that no other program is used. Uh, you know, like user local share, user share, user name of the program. Anything they can do to confuse you, they do, because uh, developers, other than me, all hate you. Uh, just a little bit of a tip there. Okay, looks like that worked. So now we can go over here and mock HA Ray a little bit to annoy some people. Uh, and I might have to restart Stellarium if this doesn't work without uh, without restarting. But let's let's see what I can do about this. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think I can force it to reload in in flight, as it were. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, shut this off. One of the things I really like about Stellarium, very easy to turn off. This used to be a big X in the previous versions, but a lot of programs. Um, Emacs, for example, is very hard to get out of once you're in it. A lot of programs make it a little bit difficult to escape, and Stellarium is basically saying, you're going to love this program so much, we don't have to hide the escape button, the, ex the exit button. So, done. So now, let's go ahead and run Stellarium again. Hopefully, this time it will pick up... Um, it will pick up the, uh, the new sky cultures. And once again... Oh, I didn't save those settings, which probably was a bad thing. Oh, it's a, actually a really bad thing. Hang on, I'm going to have to... Um, well, let's see. Okay, so if I were being consistent now, this would say Albuquerque again. If I leave it as Paris, it's going to confuse people because it's going to be like, why? It doesn't really matter, of course, because we're not using it like that. Um, we're using it in this mode as a um, as a sky chart. And that's a good thing. We, we, we kind of want to annoy people by thinking, you know, oh, Albuquerque, Albuquerque, must be in Albuquerque. Then Paris, for no reason. Just to mess with them. Because again, the goal is to annoy people. All right, so let's go over here now and change our star lore. Oh, Sky and Telescope has one? Wow. Okay, let me actually see what that looks like. I'm actually sort of excited about that one. <laughs> uh, I'm such a weenie. Um, and of course, in order to actually see something, we need to say, show us the constellation lines. Um, and they use really horrible ones too. Not as good as I would expect. Although, um, Boy, that looks like the world's saddest version, and I don't mean 
sad as in unhappy that she hasn't had sex. I mean sad as in really poorly drawn. Um, the twins always, the Gemini actually makes a pretty good picture there. Um, the ram doesn't look anything like the ram. Uh, so they're using some of, by the way, Capricornus, um, I th I'm going to actually quote correctly here because I actually had to look this up once. Um, yeah. I read a book a long time ago that said Capricornus looks like a bikini um, or a pair of women's underwear. Um, although I think they said bikini and the women's underwear maybe have been somewhere else. Um, and for a long time I just thought maybe I imagined it because what decent astronomical author is going to actually say the word bikini? Um, well, it turns out it really did happen. It's in 365 Starry Nights. Um, and let's go ahead and embarrass the author a little bit by looking at this book. I do have a copy of it here, uh, but we should be able to find it online. And uh, yeah, this is uh, hang on. This is the H.A. Ray Stars book, by the way. Uh, yeah, this is it right here, Chet Ramo. So Chet Ramo, big perv who likes to look at bikinis in the sky. Although, um, and, and the point I think I was trying to make here is that Capricorns is actually supposed to be the sea goat. And if you see a goat in here, um, you're, you're, you're pretty, you've got a pretty good imagination. These really do look like panties. Uh, sorry, bikinis and panties. Um, and at one point I was actually uh, younger. Uh, in fact, I was younger when I started saying this sentence. Um, and I wondered if it would be possible to uh, sort of, instead of drawing the constellations, um, you know, the way the IAU does or any existing sky culture, whether we could draw them so they looked uh, pornographic. Uh, now, the naming of stars is called Uranography, which sounds pretty dirty to begin with. Uh, so I was going to call this project Uranopornography, uh, which is incorrect because we're not naming the stars. We're just drawing lines between them. Uh, I did give this up uh, partly because... Um, so it's not really, I mean, it'd be interesting to do, but uh, partly because um, I got married and, you know, briefly got a life and, and, and found women. Um, wasn't worth it, by the way. Um, but also partly because I think uh, there's a lot of ways to draw lines between the stars. And it would be actually sort of interesting to see how people did it. And, and, um, and now we're going to come to one of the big problems here with what H.A. Uh, Ray did. See, you didn't think I was going to segue there, um, but I am. So this is the uh, this is the sky and telescope one, which is not the H.A. Ray one. So now I'm going to show you why H.A. Ray is beautiful, and then we're going to insult him like he's never been insulted before. That's probably not true. I don't know how often he's been insulted. So over here, we're going to go down to... Wow, there's an other one? Who the hell? People have been doing stuff while I've not been paying attention. Um... Wow. So clearly, people have been doing crap while I've not been paying attention. So let's take a look at what this guy does. Okay, and, and actually we're sort of now going to be... Um, this is actually doing a pretty good job of, of what I'm going to point out of why H.A. Ray sucks and annoy people. So now we're going to go to H.A. Ray. If we can... Let's see. Uh, H.A. Ray. And, oh, I was going to say I didn't know what his name It's Hans Augusto. Oh, my God. And Ray isn't his full name. It's Hans Augusto Reiserbach. So, apparently, he can't decide if he's Austrian, some sort of uh, Portuguese, Spanish, French, and German, or whatever this name. Uh, yeah, it is German. Um, so, that's why he was drawing monkeys that are actually apes for most of his life. Okay, um... Uh, let's see. There's one very minor thing he does that this may not mention. Um. And as, as someone pointed out, uh, this is actually pretty good. Um, but the big problem here is going to be the one we're going to see now, which is, this looks gorgeous. I mean, this is, this looks like a real whale. This looks like a freaking ram. This looks like a freaking bull. And I'm going to stop using the word freaking now for a second. This kind of looks like a crab. This actually looks quite a bit like a lion. Um, and this looks, I wouldn't say a virgin, because she's lying down waiting for it. 
but this does look like a woman. It's not bad. So why is this why is this actually terrible, even though it looks so nice? And it's because H. A. Ray uses fainter stars to get these nice figures going. Um, and okay, this is actually not a great example of that. Um, so let's see how he drew the water carrier. Uh, so you can see that he has to use some fairly faint stars to get his shapes going, including fifth magnitude stars, which I think this is one of. 4.80, which rounds up to, f to 5. Um, so so, so his, his drawings, even though they match the figures, he cheats by using fainter stars. And there's a double cheat here, which is in addition to using fainter stars, he doesn't use all the bright ones. Um, well, he doesn't use all of the fainter stars. So really, if you were to see this figure in the sky, you probably could do it, but you'd have to ignore all these other stars in the sky, and you'd have to see some fairly uh, dim stars to get it. And he, he openly admits to this in his book, that he uses, um, he uses uh, first, second, third, fourth, and some fifth magnitude stars in his diagrams, not all fifth magnitude stars. And that's where the problem lies, of course, is fifth magnitude stars can be hard to see, and if you're going to mention some of them, you should probably make some indication of the rest of them. I mean, what are all these stars you're in? You know, they're not really part of the constellation. So that's one of the, uh, the one of the big problems with uh, <coughs> with H.A. Ray. And I think the other problem he actually admits to, but um, sort of gotten lost, I think. Um, when he draws Monoceros the unicorn, which I might be able to find, Yeah, well, we'll have to use the search feature. Monoceros literally meaning one horn. One of the stars he uses is not in Monoceros. It's, in fact, in Hydra. Um, he actually knows this, and he actually mentions this in his book. And he says he does it because... Really, this looks a lot more like it's part of this constellation than it's part of this constellation. Now, I'm going to try something really uh, interesting. I'm going to see if I can find in Google Books uh, this book, the H.A. Ray books. I actually have two editions right here in front of me. Um, you can't see them because partly because they're off camera and partly because I'm screen sharing and not videoing. Um, but if I can find them in Google Books, there's act he actually mentions this, and, and we can actually... We can actually, um, if they allow us to search into that page, we can, oh god, there's like a lot of different uh, versions of this, but let's see, um, um, yes, this is gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, come on. By the way, we can actually download this if we want to by using... In fact, I'll show you a little nice little trick here. Um, if I had my freaking... Where's my toolbar? Menu bar. There we go. Go to Tools, um, Page Info, Media. That's me. That's how I really look. No. Um, you will see that this page is really just an image. All, in fact, all the pages are images. And what you can do here... Whoa! No mama! Something has gone terribly wrong! Okay, hang on. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And you can steal this image. Uh, you can steal these images pretty easily. Um, unless they've changed something and you can't anymore. Which will annoy me because I like stealing things. Uh, okay, no. Clear dot. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is what we want. And now you might say, well, this uh, this uh, this um, zoom level is terrible. But this is actually just a preview of it. So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to go really crazy. We're going to copy the URL and use curl to bring it down. We, but there's other ways to do it. We could have just saved this. Uh, but what's sort of clever is that you can use curl, which means, in theory, uh, you could script this. In other words, um, even though I'm using, uh, you know, using Google's... Um, Okay, I need to get my terminal. 
even though we're using Google and we're on there and we have cookies and I'm logged in and all this stuff, you can get a hold of this image without even being logged in. That's sort of the clever bit. I'm going to create a directory for this. Uh, L-O, L means redirect, O means give it the name. Uh, you know what, I don't think I want to do that. Oh, minus capital O means give it an automatic name, but I'm not going to do it because I, um, um, because I don't know if it's going to be able to get an automatic name out of this. So now you might think, hey, no cookies, no nothing, just a URL. Did I actually get it? Ooh. I did not get it. Very nice. So they've actually added some protection to this now. Not going to matter because I can still get it. Um, um, okay, hang on. Something's wrong here. Uh, uh oh. I should be able to download this image. And it should not be. I'm going to do content.htm, and I think it's actually, even though it says it's a. Um, it's an HTML document. It's not going to be. It's going to be. A, it's going to be an image. Um, and again, maybe they've changed this so they've got better protection against people like me, who are trying to screw them over. But hopefully not. So let's see if it actually showed up here. There it is. And notice the beautiful resolution here: 1,025 by 1,326. Gorgeous. And that's going to mean we're not going to actually be seeing it full resolution. But thanks to XV, and I could have used Faye as well. I, I prefer Faye. I don't know if I have it installed here, though. Crop, and then you can uh, do a um, a max. I probably meant to do max spec there, but let's see. Oh, it's not great, but we can read it. It's readable. Um, so, so again, this is totally useless information. Um, I'm going to save it as fake unicorn. See, that's really clever because, of course, all unicorns are presumably fake. Uh, but, of course, this is fake-er because <laughs> it's, it's, it's from the book. Okay, and let's see if I can put a page number on that. Because, again, this is the height of being obnoxious here. Um, you're saying, you know, on page so-and-so, we reference blah, 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 blah. Ah! So what page are we on, actually? It's Constellation Chart 10, page 48. Again, this is information totally useless, doesn't help anyone at all. And actually, I might not actually end up putting this in the answer, because, I mean, you're watching this video, I'm wasting your time. Um, and the answer is going to waste, you know, going to annoy people, waste their time. This might go too far. Um, and the other thing is he's going to mention uh, where he says he only uses some of the uh, of the of the uh, fifth magnitude stars, not all of them, uh, which which is bad for us because it means um, it means effectively that uh, let's see if I can, oh come on let's see if I can get to where I need to be here. And I actually happen to remember the exact phrase that he uses. So assuming I can actually get down here. Uh, oh, I need to clear the search. Okay, that's why. And now I should have a little search thingy here. There we go. Control F did that. So he uses the phrase eagle eyed. Uh, let's see. Ooh. So that didn't quite give me what I want. Let's see if we can get the sixth magnitude in there. Whoa! Sixth magnitude? And oh, this is not cool. Uh, so I need to figure out where he says some fifth magnitude stars. Aha! Here it is. Smoking gun. Um, part of the smoking gun. So let's go ahead and save this before we forget. Um, the the fact that this is more than four, 600 fourth magnitude stars, what we're looking for is the opposite. 
which is he doesn't say all fourth magnitude stars. <coughs> so he's admitting uh, two types of stars here, for, and he does admit many fifth magnitude stars as well. So let's go ahead and screw them over by looking at page info, media, um, come on. And by the way, this is a data, no, actually it's not, never mind. There's a real clever way to sort of inline images using the data type, but we're not, they're not doing it, so we'll talk about that later, and I actually use it in one of my other projects. Uh, okay, so I, I probably just missed it, because I'm not paying attention. Okay, this might be right here. This actually just looks like icons, though. So that's, that's me. That's this. That's this. That's this. Okay, I'm going to be annoyed if I can't screw them over. Okay, this is too small to... This is just the clear dot that they use. Da, 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 da. Of course, if all else fails, which it appears it's going to... Um, Wow. Uh, we can always just uh, use screen capture. Um, and I don't know if this version of uh, this version of Firefox does not have a, um, a capture this uh, cap a screenshot page, but we can do it using XWD, which is of course the X window display capture thingy majiggy boop. Um, don't actually know what it's called. It's called XWD. And so let's go ahead and move this a little bit here so we can still get to it. Um, now, let's see. All right, so let's go ahead and put it into uh, this directory here. 12.12, today's directory. Um, and we're going to say sleep to. And these things always, they're in XWD format. They're always horrible. Let me make sure I can get back and forth to where I need to be quickly. Um, let me move this a little bit to the right here, because it is only going to capture what's in the window. Can I move this? Oh, no, I cannot. Okay. So we're going to go sleep to. So now we have two seconds to get over here. Captured. And now if you bring this up in XV, sometimes it, it has weird color issues, because... XWD is a really weird kind of format, um, but there we go. And then if we want, we could crop this out. Um, and I will go ahead and... Cr uh, yeah, I want to crop out a rectangular area, so we will do this. Crop, save, and we'll say not all fourth dot PNG. I don't know why it does this. As far as I, I didn't know that... Uh, you, you know, PNG had was like JPEG had this sort of weird concept of uh, compression versus quality. JPEG definitely does. I didn't. I thought PNG was kind of more rasterish, but maybe not. Okay, so now we've managed to ding HA Ray a couple of times. Uh, let's see if there's anything we're missing here. At this point, we're going to be pretty much ready to write up this answer. Um, oh yes, and I do want to actually mention my project, which we actually looked at just a second ago. Um, unfortunately, I'll go ahead and put this in there. Um, unfortunately, it looks like uh, uh, that, that wise guy, Brandon Rhodes, has already uh, done something like this. So uh, that actually makes a kind of a big deal of a change here. Uh, anyway, so now let's go ahead and look at the original question so we can, uh, you know, make fun of it. Uh, make fun of this guy. Now, I need to make sure no one's mentioned Skyfield already, because if they have, they've technically answered the question. Although, it'll be in the comments, of course. And, okay, good, they haven't. All right. So, let's begin with the, um, let's begin with the debauchery of writing this up. Although, let's see how long, I've been streaming now for an hour and 24 minutes, which is getting close to the, uh, sort of the upper limit of how much I want to stream. Um, so what I'm going to do here, um... And, and this is this is like the sort of insane amount of evil annoyance that uh, that even I'm going to annoy myself now. I'm going to write this up later, but I'm going to end the stream in a few couple minutes, and then I'm going to post a link to this stream to 
to astronomy.stackexchange as part of the, not as an answer, as a comment, and just say that I've, uh, just say that I've uh, live streamed my answer to this. So, I'm being a little bit too obvious now because this contains so many negative references to people, it will annoy them, and I can no longer hope, I mean, it's still possible that even with this link, people will just ignore me, because I'm going to add something like, you know, and I will write it up later. And maybe they'll just wait for that. Uh, but there's a possibility that they won't wait for that, and in, in which case, um, I could be in a little bit of trouble here. Um, so this was not the plan. The plan was to get this all written up tonight. Uh, of course, I could just make them wait for the answer. I don't want to do that. Uh, and, and there's going to be some stuff in this, in this uh, video that is, I don't think I'm going to be able to put into the answer. Um, there is a, uh, when you annoy people, if you do it too much, you come off as a troll. And once people realize you're a troll, they don't pay as, as much attention to you, so you can't annoy them as much. So you have to sort of balance the number of, of sort of uh, annoyances you can put in an answer while still pretending like you're trying to be helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream now. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put it on, U I think I'm going to give them the URL for, for whatever this turns out to be. Uh, I will put it on YouTube also, but that'll take a little bit of time because it takes time to download and upload, download from Twitch, upload to YouTube. So, uh, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you are offended, you're supposed to be. And uh, good night.